What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and today's feature blade is from Best Tech Knives. What we've got here is the Best Tech Fanga Flipper Folder. Look at that clip point. It is a beautiful, beautiful design. Uh, this review has been a long time coming. Uh, long-term subscribers here at Baz on Blades will know um, I did an unboxing and initial reaction uh, to this knife when they first came out, I would say a year or better ago. Um, and then I never did the in-depth review. There is a reason for that we will talk about later in this uh, video, in this review. And uh, right now, let's say a little bit about Best Tech. Um, one of those Chinese companies, they're doing high-end budget knives. Uh, they've got higher-end, like, titanium frame locks and stuff. Uh, the first thing I noticed out of them was their uh, G10 D2 budget series. I reviewed multiples of those knives. They always reviewed well. Uh, in fact, um, more than a couple of them have found their way into my collection. So, um, the next thing we know, after these uh, D2 G10 knives that were around the uh, $50, $55 price point were out for a while, we had three new knives drop from Best Tech, the Fanga, uh, the Ascot, and the Bison. The Fanga and the Ascot were both liner locks with similar materials and build types, just different designs. And then the Bison was a titanium frame lock. Now, um, these knives all came, uh, the Fanga and the Ascot were right around $100 depending on handle material. Uh, this was the more premium handle material and this is alternate layers of blue G10 and solid carbon fiber. Uh, this was available with the blue G10, uh, with a tan G10, and then with a black G10, all in alternating layers with carbon fiber. And then you had a uh, solid G10 handled models that were a few dollars, uh, few dollars less expensive. Other than that, they're the same knife. Um, a hundred dollars is pushing the envelope, I think, in anybody's book as far as calling this a budget knife. Uh, you're at that crossover point, at least for Baz on Blades, where you are crossing over from uh, everyday accessibility budget knives into the mid range. Uh, I typically consider budget knives to be in the zero to one hundred dollar price range, and then from one hundred to uh, three hundred dollars to be the mid range, and then from three hundred dollars up to be the high end um, these were pushing the barrier for budget knives I'm sure uh, there will be many comments down below uh, people that do not consider one hundred dollars to be a budget knife and you know what that's I totally understand that like I say it is pushing the barriers um, let us set this down you know I don't know if these knives uh, were intended to be sold as deluxe budget knives or not. Um, I think these three knives, the Fanga, Ascot, Bison, um, sort of got lost with their marketing. They were, um, I don't remember seeing any marketing pointing out the more deluxe materials and details in them. Um, they may, I think they may have got lost in the shuffle a little bit, maybe weren't as popular as they should have been. Now, we'll take a look at the box in here, uh, the packaging, it is Best Tech Packaging. This is the Fanga. This particular model is the BG18E. That is the blue G10 layered with carbon fiber. Uh, inside that box, you will find the Best Tech zipper pouch. We've all seen this. Uh, it is an opposing pocket, two pocket zipper pouch, clamshell style. It will come with a microfiber cleaning cloth, uh, some printed information on Best Tech. The knife will be in a baggie. Uh, when this was purchased, they did have a promo going on where you got a free uh, flight tag with it. But I don't think, I don't think that is still going. After all, that was a year year ago um let's see here let's go ahead and get the numbers knocked out and then we're going to talk about this knife a little bit 
So it is a full size flipper folder. Uh, you are looking at a four inch blade length that is about 10 centimeters. Uh, blade stock thickness was 150 thousandths of an inch or 3.8 millimeters. Your blade width uh, just shy of an inch. It is at 960 thousandths of an inch. Uh, or 24 and a half millimeters. Uh, the handle length, five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. Handle thickness, little thicker than normal at 620 thousandths of an inch or 15.9 millimeters. Uh, your handle width at the widest up here at the pivot, uh, 963 thousandths of an inch or 24 and a half millimeters. Uh, your closed width, again, very slender in this design. Uh, it is, let's see, 1.2 inches or 31 millimeters. Overall length, uh, nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters. Your stop pin diameter, 134 thousandths of an inch or 3.4 millimeters. Uh, behind the edge on this high flat grind uh, was very slicey at 16 thousandths of an inch and that is 0.41 millimeters. Uh, the handle to blade ratio, a very respectable 72% and the weight 4.73 ounces or 134 grams, um, a little heavier than some people like, but, but uh, for a nine and a half inch knife, 4.73 ounces or 134 grams is not that bad. Uh, we're going to take a look here and you can look and see whether we've got any skeletonizing going on here. And I think I've got that light right. Uh, there is skeletonizing on those liners going on to lighten this uh, pretty large knife. Now, the blade material on this is D2. I know everybody's sick and tired of D2, uh, but D2 is D2, no matter whether you like it or not. It is a high carbon, high chromium, vanadium alloy, semi-stainless tool steel. Um, it misses the stainless um, qualifier by about a percentage and a half of chromium. Uh, what you get out of D2 is a very basic tool steel. Uh, the performance is very basic and very straightforward. Um, D2 is chock full of very large carbides and it, it sharpens to a sort of a razor edge that is very toothy. Now the initial razor edge will wear off and then it leaves a long lasting, very toothy working edge. And that is all of those big old carbides that are up along the edge on that secondary grind. Um, I like D2. Uh, it's easier to take care of than carbon steels. No, it's not totally stainless, but just a, a little bit of care is all D2 needs. Uh, it'll take a very aggressive edge. Um, you get decent um, impact resistance out of it, a decent corrosion resistance. Um, it's, it's not a modern steel. But I, I like D2. D2 has got character. Um, and people boohoo D2 uh, so much, but um, I'd rather have it than some other steels. I can guarantee you that. Uh, and anybody that's been along in the knife world uh, for 20 or 30 years, uh, D2, we're still happy with D2. Okay, it may not be a super steel, but doggone it, it's way better than what we used to get typically. Uh, materials in your handle, like I said, this version is in the uh, layered, alternate layered G10 carbon fiber, this particular one in blue. Um, so you've got that handle material over stainless liners. Uh, it is a ball bearing pivot uh, set up on ceramic bearings. Um, let's see, you've got a G10 backspacer, you've got a milled titanium, a sculpted designer type of pocket clip here. That's one of the deluxe aspects of this budget knife at $100. And then you've got anodized titanium uh, pivot collars here on the pivot. Uh, Torx, small screws, T6 down here on the body and the clip, and then T8. Uh, it looks double-sided, but one side is captured on this. Uh, so T8 for your pivot. 
Uh, and that's it for materials. Uh, what you are getting in this um, over the basic G10 D2 models was um, there is a lot more machining, intricate machining going on here on both the blade and the handle. You did get the uh, sort of improvement in handle materials going to this um, alternate layered handle material that is, it does give you the visual um, impact of carbon fiber and a little bit of color here. Um, then you got, you know, this titanium pocket clip. A very, it's a good pocket clip. It's not that bad at all. We'll take a closer look at it here in a little while. Um, so material wise, you did get a step up from the common $50, $55 range of knives, uh, mostly in the handle. And then you got some more intricate milling uh, machining on it, but you did end up with D2 for your blade material. It's still a stainless liner lock. Um, you just, um, the things that you paid more for in this series were visual impact rather than sort of performance level. Now, fit and finish on this knife is, I'm gonna tell you right now, um, this is one of the smoothest um, feeling and acting knives I have ever gotten in the budget, quote unquote, budget realm. It is extremely smooth. I mean, it is extremely smooth, guys. Um, fit and finish wise, that smoothness carries on over here to the blade grinds, which are very good. Uh, they're very good. Sorry about that glare, guys. Um, you have got a big old tall flat grind here that um, I don't think that it's a full grind. Um, it does just butt up against this sort of fuller machine groove here that's on both sides. Uh, you've got some sort of triangly, holy, grooviness up here that, um, I don't know, it may be a little overkill. Um, I could have done with either the milled groove or the hole, but not both of them. I think it's too much. I think most of the impact in this design is this very abrupt clip. Um, very pointy profile, guys. Look at that. That thing just sticks right in there like it's sharp on the tip, which it is. Um, it's, a, it's a stylistically very interesting uh, blade that was, as far as fit and finish goes, very well done. Even the etching on it uh, is cleanly done, and it's not billboarded all too crap. Um, yeah, I'm there with that as far as fit and finish goes on that blade. Uh, fit and finish on the handle is as good as you can expect for $100. I mean, this thing, let us look at it closely. Look at how everything meets up. Okay, you don't see any gaps. You don't see anything. Everything is just flush and slick and so well done. As we come around this inside edge, look at the inside edge of the liners. They're chamfered on the inside edge. Um, it In the hand, it feels very refined as far as the fit and finish goes. It is definitely, as far as fit and finish goes, this is a, a, a good, good level of fit and finish at $100. I have seen two and three hundred dollar knives with a bunch of hot behind them that didn't have as good a fit and finish as this knife. Uh, zero, zero issues there. Um, it's just, it's just smooth, guys. It's smooth and it's slick and it's it's just so well done. Now. Let's move on to action, and this is where the big issue comes in. Let's talk about the good first. Uh, like I say, it's very, very smooth on ceramic bearings. Um, the flipping action is fantastic. Uh, the centering is very, very good. The lockup is as solid, there is no hint of any play. 
There's no flex there at all in either direction. Look at this. I am flexing the blade. That's a blade flex right there. And remember, uh, that's nearly four millimeter blade stock. Uh, I'm flexing it that much with no play in it. And it's, it's super smooth, guys. It is super smooth. The one glaring issue with at least this one example of the best tech finger is it has a weak detent. Uh, and when I say it's weak, um, I would not trust that detent to be able to open a jar of peanut butter. In fact, we are going to typically don't do this. We're going to swivel the camera up here vertical and I'm going to show you guys if I can how weak it is. Watch this. Okay, um, that's not me flinging that thing, okay? That's it, guys. Uh, it's a pretty doggone weak detent. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty weak, guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, let's go ahead and tilt back down here, and we will talk about this some. And that is what killed my enthusiasm for this knife. I was so disappointed in that detent. Um, at the time, I was a little bit of a detent snob. But after carrying this thing, for uh, I've carried it so often. I found myself carrying it even though I was really disappointed in it. Um, not only because it's a great slicer, but because it's a great flipper. It is a fantastic flipper, and all of that is in the geometry, the way this thing is set up, the relationship of the flipper tab to the center line of the pivot is fantastic. It is fantastic. It is super easy to flip this thing and to have it rock it out. Okay, it's super easy. It doesn't take any special technique or anything. It's a fantastic flipper, but you can, you can fail it on that detent, guys. And of course, you can flick it out on that weak detent. And that was so disappointing to me. I just, I just, I just lost all enthusiasm for this knife, which is a shame because we're going to go into the ergos and utility uh, potential for this knife um, ergonomically. Now, uh, there's sort of, um, we need to say something for you guys with the giant Sasquatch hands. This is a very narrow handle design. If you do not like narrow handle designs, you're not going to like this knife no matter how cool it looks because it is a narrow handle design. Now, one thing they have done is they've made the thickness um, thicker than normal. Usually we're looking at the half inch range, but this is uh, 620 thousandths. It's an eighth of an inch over uh, pretty much, let's see, an eighth of an inch is 125 thousandths, right? Let's see, that would be uh, 625 thousandths. Yeah, pretty much an eighth of an inch over that half inch. And what that does is what you lose in width, you sort of gain in thickness. So when you grab it, even though it feels narrow, it's still, it's got a, enough um, oomph to it, enough body to it in that extra thickness to where it helps to balance it out. Now, it's not going to balance it out for people with giant Sasquatch hands, uh, but large, medium, small hands, it's all good. It's all good. And as far as the handle length, you've got five and a half inches of real estate, a pretty wide open design here, nice deep finger choil. You know, Bazon Blades loves those finger choils. You've got a great place here with some pretty much worthless, totally rounded over and polished jimping. But you do have this dished area right here that is well placed in relation to the finger choil. So it is comfortable. It feels like a comfortable grip. You're not compressed way up or you're not you know having to overextend it's just a natural the way your hand falls on it um it is cnc milled it is radius these handle scales are radius you can see right here um it feels 
it, I'm not going to say it feels tool-like, but it has a lot of those characteristics. Um, maybe it feels, you know, narrow in a tool-like sort of feel. But, uh, I mean, it's not crazy. It's not crazy in any particular way at all, except its narrowness. Uh, really, the rest of the handle is pretty wide open and accepting of different grips. Let's see here. Yeah, 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 That's that feels good to me. Uh, feels good to me, you know, with my, you know, medium large hands, large hand size, medium uh, finger length. It feels pretty good. Um, so, as far as the uh, ergonomics of the handle, I, I think it's good. Uh, giant Sasquatch hand guys, uh, you may want to take a pass on it. Let's go up here to the blade. Take a look at utility use of the blade. Um, it's a big, high, thin behind the edge, flat grind on a very sharp, very pronounced clip point. Uh, it is very stylized, but uh, there is no loss of utility use as far as uh, being stylized. Uh, the way that it is styled uh, is all in this mill and it's in this abrupt clip. But here uh, at the working edge of the knife, you've just got a working edge. I mean, there's, you know, you've got plenty of straight flat edge here. You go into a very uh, light, relaxed belly here, all the way up to a fairly high. Uh, that is a, it's a fairly high tip, considering the style of clip here. And then again, it's a very sharp at all, um, or it's very sharp. Uh, I'm going to cut myself if I don't be careful. Uh, it's not dainty thin, but it's not heavy duty work knife thick out there. And it is a very sharp, guys. I do need to uh, be careful with that. Um, I, I think utility wise, if you're looking for a, a long, narrow bladed slicer, uh, it works very well in that. So it's, it's like uh, we've got this knife. It's got a bunch of styling cues going on. It's got some uh, some good looking materials on it. It's got this sort of fancy Nancy sculpted organic shaped um, I don't even know what to call that shape of pocket clip. And you know what? You wouldn't think that would work on anything, but it works on this knife. There's so much going for this knife. Uh, it is a damn shame that the detent on it is so weak. It is a damn shame it's so weak. Um, it just, it just takes away the fun of this knife, even though it is a fantastic flipper. Um, if this knife had a strong detent, and I don't mean a super strong detent, I mean just a good strong detent, it would be one of the best flippers I'd ever had in my hands. And I mean, I bet this thing would be a contender with my zero tolerance 0452 carbon fiber, which is the best flipper I've ever owned, uh, bar none. Um, really, the only knives I've had in my hand that were better flippers uh, were above the $500 price point. Uh, and this thing would be such a great flipper if that detent were stronger. Um, now, Vazon Blades, why didn't you send this thing back and exchange it? And I've explained this before, guys. I just don't, I don't send back knives that I got for review. Um, I mean, every aspect of this knife, from the, um, the materials to the design to the fit and finish is so well done. Um, I, I love the material. The material is super attractive. Love that blue and carbon fiber. And with all this millwork, it really brings out so many different views of that material. Um, I, you know, I like the titanium pivot collar here. I like that titanium pocket clip. Uh, I like this uh, aggressively clipped uh, blade profile. I like the overall size, nine and a half inches. Uh, in my hands, the narrow handle, uh, it works okay. 
it works okay, guys. Um, Sasquatch hand guys, yeah, maybe not so much. But for me, it's good. And that really uh, is this knife in a nutshell. I love literally everything about this knife except for that weak detent except for that weak detent and that is a shame uh, what I should have done was sent this knife back in and exchanged it but I just don't do that on review knives um, I mean what's what is the good of a reviewer that gets a knife in with a problem and then just sends it back in for a better one before he does the review um, that's not an honest reviewer right there now, if you wanted to do a video and point out the issues and then send it in and then do a review of the, the follow-up uh, example, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I just didn't think about doing that because I was just, I was so damn discouraged. I was. I just put it away. I just put it, I just put it in the knife roll and left it there. Uh, and it sat there for months and months and months and I never did anything with it. And then I started thinking I need to review it. Um, I started carrying it more, and I really grew to appreciate the design. Um, I like the long, narrow knives. They give you uh, plenty of blade length, four inches of blade length, and such an easy-to-carry package. 1.2 inches wide. Uh, that's a very narrow, very easy to carry in your pocket. Pretty deep uh, carry pocket clip for a milled clip. They did move it all the way back to the end of the handle here to get as deep as they could. Um, and the pocket clip works real well. The knife carries very well. And it cuts so well. Uh, when I say it's 16 thousandths behind the edge, guys, it's 16 thousandths. And I hit that in three spots along the edge and then averaged it out, and I actually didn't have to average. It was very consistent. It was 16 thousandths at all three spots. And it's a, it's a slicer, guys. It's a slicer, no doubt about that. It's so smooth. It is so smooth. I mean, everything about this knife is just so very smooth. Just so very smooth. I mean, no matter how you look at this knife, everything is totally right. This is what you would expect uh, from a $100 knife. It is $100 perfection except for that detent, and that's a damn shame. Um, now, Bazon Blades, are you going to recommend the Best Tech Fanga? Um, you know what? I am going to recommend this model because I know that just because I got one with a weak detent does not mean they all have a weak detent. Uh, I will say this, if you buy one and it does have a weak detent, uh, don't wait a year to do anything about it. Send that thing back. You don't have to worry about it like Baz on Blades does. Uh, send it back and get you a better example. It's a, it's a worthy, worthy knife. Lots of visual flash, uh, appealing, interesting, um, intriguing design. Um, nice and big, nice and big, not too heavy, less than five ounces for a, uh, a four inch blade, uh, narrow design, easy to carry, uh, some dressy stuff here with the different titanium parts that's on it, uh, fantastic looking handle material, yeah, yeah, Bazon Blades is going to recommend this knife, um, Best Tech makes a solid product, they do make a solid product, so, uh, as always, I thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. Uh, God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.